and action. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Garage Learning from Home. I'm Steve Geralt here in my dirty basement, and we're going to teach you something new today. Matt Huber from my team is going to talk all about plexiglass or acrylic and how you could use it in the things that you build. We use it for pouring rigs, for tanks, and for all sorts of other ways to work where metal or wood really don't make sense. Before I met Matt, I had no idea how to work with plexiglass. I'd only hire expensive tank makers to make these fancy tanks for me. But now I'm so much smarter and so will you after you watch this awesome video by Matt. So stay tuned for more. It's so exciting. Here we go. Take it away, Matt. All right. Hi, I'm Matthew Huber. Welcome back to The Garage Learning. Today, I'd like to tell you about one of my favorite building materials, acrylic plexiglass. We use it all the time. It's very versatile and easy to work with. Here at The Garage, we've used plexi for many, many different builds and projects. We've used it as a prop mount, a way of putting a prop attached to a robot arm. We've used it for water tanks for shooting in, enclosures for electronics, mechanical gearboxes, and even lighting modifiers. Let's talk about some of its qualities as a building material. It's harder than wood, but softer than most metals. It's also rather brittle, so under stress it can crack and break. It's dimensionally stable in water, so unlike wood, it won't warp when it gets wet. However, if you get it too hot, it'll start to warp, and if you really get it too hot, it'll catch fire. Don't do that, it smells terrible. It's workable. With the right tools, you can get clean, smooth cuts. But my favorite thing about it is how easy it is to join it to itself. And we'll show you how in just a little bit. Let's talk about what tools are good for working with Plexi. First of all, you don't want to use a spiral bit for drilling holes. A step bit works much better. However, sometimes if you have to, you can use a spiral bit with thicker pieces of Plexi. Keep in mind, Plexi doesn't like to get hot. So if you're cutting or drilling, you want to make sure that whatever debris comes off your cutting area gets clear of your work and doesn't sit there rubbing up against it, getting hotter and hotter. It will tend to gum up. And if it does, it's really not going to turn out very well. Sometimes I use water to keep things cool. Just know that it's gonna to wanna to pull through at the end and probably crack your work. If you have a mill, you can mill plexi just like you would metal. However, don't let it get too hot or it'll gum up on your cutting tools. You can even tap plexi the way you would metal. However, you have to keep it cool. So I use water instead of cutting oil. For regular square cuts, a table saw can do an excellent job. I recommend using a saw blade made for cutting plexi or metal. Thin plexi can be scored with a utility knife and then snapped apart. For curved cuts, you can use a jigsaw. However, be careful. I wouldn't use a jigsaw with anything thinner than a quarter inch because it's rather hard to control. You need to brace it very well so you don't crack the brittle plexi. Don't use a blade made for metal. Use one made for wood. Go slowly and make sure your chips are getting clear of your work. You don't want your blade getting too hot because then you end up with these gummy, nasty cuts. I'd like to show you a few examples of things I've made with plexi. This is a rectangular plexi container, very simple. The bottom of it has a quick release plate. That's how I used to connect different containers to different rigs. This guy is a cylindrical container. It was used for a spinning vortex of liquid. It could also be used to pour. This is a very simple deflector that I made. I put a curve into it by heating it in the oven. This is a small set piece. It's a very simple little tank we used on a shoot recently. I think I mentioned before, I've used Plexi to make enclosures for different electronics. It takes a little bit of time to put this kind of thing together, but you can get exactly what you want when you make all the pieces yourself. So you've seen some of the containers that we can make, and you might be wondering, what are you going to do with that? What can I do with that? I'll show you some examples. Here it is mounted to a pneumatic air cylinder. What's great about pneumatics is how simple they are to operate and how powerful they can be. If we were to blast air into this lower port here, this would violently and rapidly extend and launch some liquid out, making some pretty cool splashes. This is a linear slider. It can be used to move your, one of your plexi tanks. This could be done rapidly to create a splash or slowly as it might be the subject or holding your subject in your video. Here's another way you can use a plexi tank like this. We've got a rotational motor here. It's a great way to create controlled pours. You can use it with Dragon Frame software or 
We can program it with an Arduino in order to pour when we want to at the speed that we want to. As part of this video, I'd like to show you how easy it is to build a plexi tank. It's a five step process. You plan your tank, then you cut your pieces. You do any of the drilling or tapping that's needed. Then you tape up all the parts together. And finally, you bond the parts together with solvent. I got out some graph paper, my ruler and pencil, and made a mechanical drawing of the tank I'm going to build. It is four inches wide, six inches long, and four inches deep. In addition to the tank, I want to have two plexi pieces attached that will have tapped holes in them for connecting this tank to 8020 rail, so I can rig it to all sorts of things. I've worked out the dimensions for the five pieces of the tank and the two attachment pieces. I'm going to make the tank out of quarter inch thick plexi. This will give me a sturdy tank that I don't need to worry about breaking. The right and left sides will be a full four inches by four inches. The front and back pieces will be five and a half inches by four inches. The front and back pieces butt up to the side pieces. So I subtracted the thickness of the plexi so the tank will be six inches on the outside dimension. The bottom piece butts up to the walls all the way around. So I subtracted the thickness of the plexi from all of its sides, making it three and a half inches by five and a half inches. I'm going to make these attachment pieces two inches by two inches. I'm going to drill four holes in them and tap them for quarter 20 threads. Okay, now I've worked out the sizes of the pieces that I need. I'm going to start making my cuts. I'm using a table saw with a saw blade made for cutting metal. It's got the same tooth pattern as blades made for cutting plexi and does quite a good job. When cutting or drilling plexi, especially if you're drilling a lot of it, you're going to want to open a window for ventilation because the fumes can give you a headache. Our first cut will be four inches. Okay, so now I've cut all my pieces with the table saw. I'm gonna drill and tap holes in the two half inch thick pieces. These holes will have one inch spacing with quarter 20 threads for easy attachment to 8020. For drilling these holes, I'm using a drill press, but if needed, you could probably do this by hand in a vise. This drill press has a dual axis vise on it that allows me to move my work in a controlled measured fashion. On this specific vise, every eight turns of the handle moves my work one inch. I have both pieces of plexi stacked in this vise so I can drill them both at the same time. Since these pieces of plexi are two inch by two inch, I'm gonna put four one inch space holes in each of them using my 13 64th drill bit. 13 64th, this is a little bit smaller than the threads I'm gonna tap. You'll notice I'm using a regular twist bit. That's because my work is under control and I'm not worried about the drill bit pulling through. If you're doing this by hand, I would use a step bit to drill the initial hole smaller than 13 64th and then widen it up to the full size with a normal 13 64th twist bit. I'm gonna go ahead and start one half inch from the corner of my work and drill my first hole. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's our half by half. You'll notice I'm pecking the bit up and down pretty consistently. This is to remove debris from the hole and it's especially important because plexiglass will gum up on your drill bit if you're not careful. Now I'm gonna move one inch over, drill my next hole and repeat. When we're done, they should look something like this. The next thing we're gonna do is tap these holes, which creates threads in them. This process is done with something called a tap, which when turned, carves out threads. You can tap with a tap handle, which is a tool that allows you to apply a lot of torque to the tap by hand. But this material doesn't need that much torque, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this with my drill. It's faster and much easier on the wrists. The type of tap that I'm using is called a gun tap, which is designed to throw the chips forward out of the hole. This tap is good for through holes. So I'm gonna grab my tap in the drill and dip the tap in water as a coolant. As we know, plexi gets gummy when it gets too hot. So just stay straight as you can, or use a tap guide, apply a little pressure, and let the drill do most of the work. We've got two tapped plates, so now we can move on to constructing the container with solvent. Here we are at the final two steps. We are so close, I can taste it. Or is that just the toxic chemicals affecting my brain? I didn't mention this before, but there's one more little step that we need to do next. We need to sand all the cut edges on the plexi pieces to make sure they get good contact. I'll just give them all a quick once over with sandpaper. Now that we've fully prepared our pieces, we can tape everything in position. I'll use masking tape around the outside edges. Ta-da, we made a box. Before we move on, check that everything is in position with a tight fit. You don't want any gaps. So with everything tight and no gaps, we're ready to add the solvent. You might be wondering, what is a solvent? 
Well, I think it's witchcraft. It's extremely fluid and seeks out thin gaps and seams. It sort of dissolves the plexi and causes it to bond together. I think it's pretty bad for you, so don't get any of it on you. You apply the solvent with a squeeze bottle needle applicator like this. Run it along the seams of the box and squeeze a little solvent into the seams. Watch it fill in the seam and move along as the seam is filled. I usually work from the inside out. After about 10 minutes, we can remove the tape and check for spots that didn't bond. I'll just fill in these spots now. Last step, I'll put my attachment pieces onto the box. I'll use a compound square to position them square to the box. I'll apply a little solvent around the edges and into the holes. So now I've finished my plexi box. It's very satisfying. It's simple and sturdy. It's exactly the size that I wanted and has the attachment points that I need to use it in a wide variety of ways. Thanks for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about plexi and can put it to good use.